Atom Stack AC1 camera for your laser. You know you do not have to have an Atom Stack laser. It can be mounted on anything, and in this case, I'm going to be putting it on a Jakota because my Atom Stack A5 Pro is inside an enclosure that is not tall enough to allow this to be used on it, and there's more space down here to do things. So we're going to go through setting this up. It looks a little intimidating when you first look at the manual. It's really not bad at all. We'll get into it coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and as I mentioned, I've got the Atom Stack AC1. Yes, AC1. It says so right here in the manual. Camera for laser, and of course, as I also said, you don't have to put it on an Atom Stack laser. I'm putting it on a Jakota right here. And when I first got this uh, from Atom Stack, and they did supply this for me to demonstrate, and I started looking through here, I thought, well, this is a little bit intimidating if you're not tech savvy. However, it's not as bad as you think. They walk you through here step by step, as do they do in light burn. And no, this does not work in laser gerbil. This is intended to be used with light burn. Light burn has a camera uh, feature built in that I'll show you when we get onto the computer here and how to set this up. So what do you get in the box? You get a manual. You get a uh, card with a pattern of dots. And if you should happen to lose this, Lightburn has one on their website you can download and print. And you also get some uh, squares of cardboard for your alignment check. I used, uh, I've done it two ways. I did my own pieces of cardboard here, just cutting up some squares. And I also use a full sheet of cardboard, as you'll see when I do this alignment demo here, because I have already set this up once to figure out how all this stuff works, so I wasn't going to be fumbling around making this video. So... Assembly, you need to mount this on your laser, and I'll kind of get you in close here and show you a couple things you need to do. One of the first things you'll need to do is uh, screw the little camera onto the mount here. It's all real self-explanatory, and there are pictures in the manual on how to do that. Uh, set your column here, uh, get everything tightened up, try to get right dead center on your laser bed. And we'll get into the grid thing here in a minute because you're going to need to uh, engrave a grid on a spoil board or on a piece of cardboard. Well, actually, you need to have your laser kind of mounted in one spot because if you start moving it around, your camera's not going to be aligned. All right, the manual shows mounting the camera on the front. I chose to mount it on the back to have it out of the way. It works the same either way. It makes no difference. You'll need to get the distance from the camera to the bed they give you measuring tape so you can check it. I'll check this again, see what that was. 420 millimeters. I just had my numbers misconglubrated there. So once you have that all set and you have it centered on your bed, you're ready to start doing the alignment. And th this is, didn't take but a couple minutes to put this all together. Okay, so for here, we'll go onto the computer and I'll walk you through getting this all set up in light burn. As I said, the manual is also very, very well written in walking you through the steps. And if you don't quite understand that, uh, the steps as I show you in light burn during setup, as you'll see, are also very, very self-explanatory. So, and hopefully what I'm doing here in this video will kind of help you out too. One thing you're going to need to do, and they have you, uh, they call you out on doing this, is you need to engrave a grid on something. I already had one on here. My grid is 400 by millimeter square. That's what they ask you to do. And then engrave an X. So you know where the center point is. I don't have an X on here exactly, but I, I do have a center point on this grid. And so finding the corners is not going to be any problem at all. When you get to the part where you need to set this in and set your little dot pattern in. So let's get on to the computer. Pretty simple. Okay, here we are in light burn. I got it open and I'm using a Jakota L1 laser here. You don't have, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to use an Atom Stack laser. You can mount this on any laser you like. So, got to set this camera up. Well, first we need to have the camera control on us. You go up here to window and go down here to camera control. Of course, I've already have this set up, but we're going to go through it anyway. But you're looking at a live view there of the 
my laser bed right here, and I can put my hand in there and wave it around like that. So that's a live view. So to set this up, we're going to go here, and we're going to calibrate the camera lens. And we pick our camera. Incidentally, if you are uh, not able to select your camera, and it doesn't show up, and you happen to have antivirus on there, you may need to disable the antivirus. This computer has Norton on it. I had to disable it until I recognize the camera, then I can turn it back on and it worked fine. So we want to choose our lens here. This is standard lens. And we're at, down here where it says uh, use preset. We want to have none do full calibration. There is a drop down window there that gives you a bunch of choices. But want to, so here, then we click next. Okay, you've got a circles panel card you need to place in there. And right now you need to place it in the center. And incidentally, when you're doing this, it's depending on your laser model, it's get the laser head out of the way as far as you possibly can so it doesn't interfere with your circle. So I'll take this and place it right in the center. You can see there on the little live view there. You want to make sure everything's flat and you have your height set on the camera, as I showed at the beginning there. So now you just want to do a capture. And I have an O. Where it says honeycomb check enabled, disable that. Okay, so we have a good score of 0.17. Next. And now we want to have it at the lower front. Click Capture. And we have a decent score again. It needs to be, uh, point, it needs to be 1.0 or less. Point three or less is ideal. I haven't been able to get all of these to come out quite that good. We'll click on next. Now we need to have it in the center or to the left side. This is actually fairly straightforward and fairly easy. It's not near as intimidating as it appears. So we got a good score there. Next. Now we need to put it to the right side. And we'll do a capture. Got a good one there. Next. Now we need to have it at the upper center. Do next. Now we need to go to the lower right. And we will do capture, and we get a good one there. Now we need to go to the lower left. And then click next. So now we need to go to the upper left. This is why it's important to have your laser head out of the way. Mine's all the way up in the upper left corner, and hopefully it'll be out of the way here enough. Well, the laser head is interfering, so I'll need to move that. There we get a good one, then we go next. If now we need to put it in the upper right corner. I'm gonna move my laser head back out. Well, my laser is off right now, by the way. When you are moving things around manually on your laser, don't do it quickly. Move things slowly because the stepper motors will generate electricity 
and feed back into your drivers that could potentially damage your motherboard. New capture here. Next. That's it. Now we need to align the camera. So we've got to run the camera alignment wizard next. Click on that. Of course, there's my camera right till we've selected it. Now you need to, of course, a 10 watt laser here. So I am going to turn my, I'm using a piece of cardboard. So I'm going to turn my fill power up to 65%. Line power to 65. I'm not going to bother with the air assist. Scale here needs to be 200. You find that in the manual, and you you can either use the four squares of cardboard, or five should say five, and place them on the laser bed, or you can just use a large sheet of cardboard, which is what I'm going to do. At this point, I have my cardboard on here, and I have my focus set. So you turn on your laser. And I need to home that. This is going to engrave a pattern on the uh, on this cardboard. And you can check your alignment that way. Okay, and once you have your pattern engraved, let's go over here and click Next. And it will show you right here in this picture. But of course, what I would need to do now is I need to move the laser head out of camera view. I have to be able to see my spots there. So I'm going to move the laser here. You can see in that uh, in the live view there at the bottom. I'm going to take it over here into the center. And once you have it so that it is um, out of the way of your engraved spots you just made, click okay, on capture image there, and then go to next. Now what you need to do is click on every one of these markers as close to center as you possibly can. And I'm zooming in so that I can do that. We want to do number one first. Now we need to do number two. We need to do number three. And mine got a little bit broke there. There was some uh, tape on there, but I can still find the center fine. And we do number four. And then next, and finish. And you'll see your camera here. Now you can do what they call update overlay. So I'm going to take that cardboard out of there. What you see right now is the, the bed. And I'm actually going to take it home. Of course, after you do your alignment, you definitely want to save the settings. Don't forget to do that or you'll be doing this over. And if you'd like to have this on your bed here, click Update Overlay. Now you have your grid pattern, if you have one, in your workspace here and you can set up your project. So, as you can see, it was, wasn't all that tough to get set up and I'm all set up now and I can uh, use this to monitor the laser if We'll get into that why do you need a camera thing here at this point. Well, there's a couple different things you can do with it. Number one is you can align your parts and stuff on your uh, bed by using the overlay. You can see your grid and you, you can set up your project exactly where you want it, especially if you're working from a current position or user origin. Uh, so either way. So that's one use. The other use would be if you have your laser connected via Wi-Fi. And I don't because we have so many Wi-Fi issues around here. I, I don't know if it's the airport or the neighbor's lawnmower. Or I don't know what it is, but we have Wi-Fi issues here. And if you have a Wi-Fi interruption when you're doing a project, it'll ruin it. So therefore, I do not use Wi-Fi on my lasers or 3D printers or on very important documents that are being printed. Always have a direct connection. But you could monitor your laser remotely if you have a connected Wi-Fi by looking at the, the camera corner screen on your computer in Lightburn.
Okay, something to keep in mind is if you bump that camera or you knock the head or you move the stand or you do something to move it and it swivels and it's not where it was when you set it up, you're going to have to go through that calibration again if you, for keeping it to align your parts and using the overlay. If you're just using it to monitor, uh, just kind of put it back where it was and we're kind of and look at your live view and see if that's what you want to see. If Again, if you're using it just for a live view in operation and you're not using it to align parts, you can raise and lower, you could get a little bit closer to your work so you can watch a little bit closer there, but don't lower it so low that the laser runs into it. And also when you mount the stand on, the, on your laser, depending on what brand you have, whether you do front, back, you can't really do it on the side, because uh, depending on your brand again, I guess, you want to make sure you don't have any collisions with the uh, gantry or the laser. So that, there it is. That's all there is to setting this up. It, it's not intimidating, really. It, I should say it's not as hard as it looks when you first look at the manual. Uh, once I walked through the steps, when I, I initially set this up yesterday, the only issue I had was because of Norton being on this particular laptop, it would not recognize that camera. Once I disabled Norton, plugged the camera back in, the computer recognized it, I added it as a uh, USB device, turned Norton back on, and I'm all good to go. Uh, something they will show in the manual here, when you're selecting your camera, it'll say use USB camera. This camera happens to be called a PH720. So if you're just looking for USB camera, it may not come up that way. Uh, it may come up as a PH720, which is obviously what this is. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. Again, Adam Stack did provide this to me to uh, test and demonstrate, and it works perfect. There'll be a link in the description if you'd like to get you one of these. It may not be for everybody. Not everybody has a use for a camera, but then again, I do a lot of honeycomb beds, not everybody used for a honeycomb bed. So, Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.